Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and it's time for my top 10 comic books of the week. That's right, everybody. Thanks for checking out the video. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups. This is my top 10 comic books of the week. So out of every new comic book that came out this week, these are the 10 that I would highlight as probably something you might want to check out. Absolutely. This is not a spec list. This is simply based on my enjoyment of the books. Let's get it going. At number 10, Lost Soldiers, number one, from Image Comics. Written by Alesh Kott, with artwork by Luca Casalongaida, Heather Marie Lawrence Moore on the coloring, and Aditya Bidikar as the letterer. Lost Soldiers is a war comic book from Alesh Kott. Now, I'm a big fan of Kott's work. Sometimes it can be a little bit challenging, a little bit hard to to, to access, to get into 100%, but I'm definitely interested in seeing his thoughts on the brutality and the ramifications of war on soldiers. This is a pretty solid book. I've read it two times now. The second time, the story was a bit more clear. It definitely had more clarity. I love the artwork. The artwork is gritty. It's raw. The coloring, the design. Tom Mueller is the designer. Um, Aditya Bedekar is just one of the best letterers out there, so that all works so perfectly. Um, you get the idea of what this story is setting up. And only on the second read did I quite really get it. That little bit of back matter at the end was pretty important. But if you're a fan of Lesh Cott, I definitely recommend that you pick this one up. It's going to be a five-issue series, I think, from Image Comics. And I'm really interested, like I said, to see Cott explore the themes of dealing with war long after the fact. It's about these two soldiers who were friends in Vietnam, and it's telling their story of what happened to them in the war, and then it jumps ahead to them as old men in a modern-day situation, and at the end, it sets it in a direction that once you realize what's going on, it's pretty damned exciting. At number 9, Wonder Woman 759 from DC Comics. Written by Mariko Tamaki, with artwork by Mikkel Hanen and Jordi Belair on the coloring, Pat Brosseau on the lettering. I've been wanting to have a good, solid Wonder Woman book for a while now. Now, I'm not saying that this is the start of the next super solid run of Wonder Woman, but the first issue was pretty decent. Didn't blow me off my feet, didn't blow me away, didn't do anything like that, but it was a great setup with a returning fan-favorite villain, at least a, a Robbie-favorite villain, I should say, with the artwork by Hanan. There's some moments where it gets a little weird looking at times, but for the most part, it's got excellent composition, great sequential storytelling, and Tamaki really did an engaging job on her first issue of Wonder Woman. She's now going to be the ongoing writer for a time, and this is a pretty promising start to the new adventures of Diana. I think Wonder Woman now, especially since she's a big star in pop culture because of her recent success in the movie theaters, I think that Wonder Woman needs some top-notch creative talent. Ta Tam uh, Tam Maki just won an Eisner for Best Writer of the Year, so this is primed right up there for it. I like the art, I like the setup for the story, and I really, really like the returning villain that you see at the end. It was a great shock, a great surprise, and I'm very much down for what's coming next. At number 8, Ascender, number 11. Written by Jeff Lemire, with artwork by Dustin Nguyen, lettering by Steve Wands. I keep saying it over and over, Jeff Lemire is just a comic book writing beast, and Ascender is no exception. What used to be a great science fiction book from Lemire and Wen has now become a really intricate and detailed and very cool and nuanced fantasy book set in space. Really liking it. It picks up a little bit maybe on Star Wars vibes, but it blows Star Wars away as far as the nuance and tragedy of the storytelling, the characters, the likability, the relatability of them. And now we're starting to see all these different pieces from Descender coming back. For instance, one of my favorite characters from the entire saga, Driller. Very excited about this issue. It did not disappoint. Dustin Wen's coloring and his, his line work, everything about it is beautiful, ethereal, magical, and captivating. That's exactly the word to describe Wen's work. Artwork here is captivating. This book is compelling. It's 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 in it's enhanced by an entrancing beauty from the artwork to the dialogue, everything about it I absolutely love. Jeff Lemire, Dustin Wen, Ascender, no surprise, is on the top ten yet again. At number seven, Grit, number one, from Scout Comics. Written by Brian Wickman, with artwork by Kevin Castanero, Simon Koff on the coloring, Micah Myers on the lettering. 
Grit number one was a pretty solid book that kind of took me by surprise. I enjoyed this immensely. If you like violent and grotesque and, and gratuitous books um, where trolls are getting their heads chopped off and all kinds of things like that, if you're a fan of works like Head Lopper or The Goon, this is a book for you. I absolutely liked it. It's got a nice breezy pace to it. It flows right through. The artwork is exceptional. The way it can capture motion, including the motion of an axe cutting off uh, like a troll's head was absolutely great. Grotesque monsters with crazy wild Lovecraftian designs almost at times. I had so much fun with this one. It's a very simple story. Like I said, it's got a nice breezy pace to it, but the writing did not get in the way of the artwork just taking center stage. The artwork on this sold me. The, the motion that's captured, the dynamic energy and flow to it. Plus, all the really great violence. I really had so much fun reading Grit. Wasn't expecting too much from it, and I was thoroughly surprised. This is pretty much going to be my sleeper hit of the wit of the week. And like I said, if you like books like Goon and Headlopper and things like that, books that are really cool, very fun, but don't take themselves too seriously, Grit might be for you. At number six, Suicide Squad, number seven, from DC Comics. Written by Tom Taylor, with pencils by Danielle Samperi, inks by Juan Alboron, coloring by Adriano Lucas, and letters by Wes Abbott. Yo, so I finally got caught up on Suicide Squad, and I'm so glad I did. Tom Taylor is a killer writer right now, doing amazing work on most of the Elseworlds type stuff. I've been clamoring to get him on an actual mainstream book, a main title set in continuity, either at DC or Marvel. He's got the chops. We know he can make us, uh, he can make a story emotionally resonate, even if it's not tied into continuity or things like that. And of course, he's on Suicide Squad, but for me, I've been kind of backing off of Suicide Squad. Squad ever since the new 52 days. I used to read Suicide Squad back in the day when it was mostly centered around Deadshot, Captain Boomerang, Penguin was in a few issues, but I love that stuff from the late 80s. And so this book was very refreshing. Tom Taylor and company have actually brought a lot of style and flair and panache to Suicide Squad. Harley Quinn is not overly annoying whatsoever. She's perfectly utilized, but the new characters, this new team, I think they're the revolutionaries or whatever. What comes compelling, interesting characters. So after reading one through six and getting caught up and now issue seven this week, what a great spotlight on Deadshot. His motivations, what he's doing, his past, all that stuff. One of my favorite characters from Suicide Squad lore and this issue just was such a delight, such a treat. Like I said, Tom Taylor and company, they've been bringing a lot of style to this book and the flow, the pacing of it, it's expert level and it's one of DC's best books. I'm glad I'm caught up on on it. If you haven't been reading it, I highly encourage you to do so. At number five, Hedra, number one, from Image Comics by Jesse Lonergan. Hedra's a really nifty, like, magazine-sized, one-shot comic book. It's an interesting format. It has no words, but it's got a great sense of composition, panel design, and layout, and a really cool and efficient and interesting way to tell the story. The story's about someone who's been shot up in a rocket into space. They come across this crazy person or being in space and then they have this crazy adventure together. Like I said, there's no dialogue. It's told and 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 it's told strictly through the artwork, tiny little panels that really make some really powerful and interesting pages to just dwell on. This book, even though it didn't have a lot of writing in it, could have been a breeze to get through, but I let it just sink in. I loved it. If you like very innovative, independent styles of comic book thinking and, and structure, this one might be for you. It's just a one shot, so there's nothing before, there's nothing after, but I really liked it. Jesse did a fantastic job on this book, and I would like to see more work from him. At number four, that Texas Blood, number two, from Image Comics, written by Chris Condon with artwork by Jacob Phillips. That Texas Blood number one gave me a very distinct Coen Brothers vibe and a neo-noir western type vibe that you get from the Coen Brothers work on books like, I mean, on movies like no Country for Old Men. Issue number two goes in a little bit of a different direction. Still feels a little Coen Brothers-esque. Still has got this nice flair for dialogue. Humorous situations, well, darkly humorous situations. But issue number two of That Texas Blood was really, really solid. We're introducing a new character. He's pretty engaging, very compelling, and they're building the mystery of what's going on in this small Texas town, and they're doing it by building the characters up, and therefore the plot kind of 
uh, kind of organically flows out of that. It doesn't feel like it's trying hard. It feels like this is effortless to them. Jacob Phillips' artwork is absolutely exceptional. He is the son of Sean Phillips. His style is similar in atmosphere and tone, but not similar at all as far as the actual line work goes um, and the style even. But I absolutely love this book. The artwork is amazing. It's got a, a rough, scratchy edge to it. The coloring is phenomenal. It's set in Texas. They definitely capture that setting so well. Like I said, new interesting characters introduced in the second issue. And by the introduction of these characters and learning about them, you learn a whole lot more about what the gist of the story is going to be, the mysteries that are going to be unraveling, and the focus on this small town and the characters that populate it. I I am sold two issues in that Texas Blood has won me over. At number three, The Kill Lock, number six, written and illustrated by Livio Romandelli with lettering by Tom B. Long. The Kill Lock has been an absolute pleasure to read. This is the final issue, and it's got a very incredibly strong ending that kind of took me by surprise. Didn't really see it coming, but it's a very effective ending. It's the ending I feel the story deserved, and it kind of threw me for a loop, but I loved it so much. The artwork has been exceptional, but the story... The, it's about these four robots who are sent basically on a death sentence, but they don't just outright kill them. They, they lock them together with the kill lock program. If one of them dies, all four of them will die. So now they have to kind of keep each other alive, take care of each other, learn about each other. They're all from different classes. And it actually is one of the most human stories I've read over the last year. And it's all about machines and robots. But it was handled so well in this ending. It's powerful. And I don't want to say much else. I'm sure we'll be talking about it tonight on the Best Comics of the Month live stream on the Everything Comics channel, 7 p.m. Central Time. Me, Bueller, Bob, and Dylan gather together to talk about our favorite comic books of the month. You don't want to miss that. I'm sure we'll be talking about Kill Lock, because Kill Lock is a book that I eventually kind of wandered away from. But those three cats pulled me right back in. They're like, you got to read this book. It's getting better. And I 100% am so happy that I did. This ending was incredibly satisfying. It was dark. It was human. It had tragedy. It had nuance. It was absolutely epic. And I loved it. If you haven't read The Kill Lock, this is the final issue. There's going to be a collected edition soon. You should definitely check it out. At number two, Bleed Them Dry, number two from Vault Comics. Written by Elliot Ray Hall with artwork by Dai Caruan, coloring by Miguel Muerto, and lettering by And World Design. Bleed Them Dry is absolutely a bonkers awesome book. It's got a great sense of action and flow and pace. It's got nice sci-fi elements to it. It's basically a cyberpunk ninja vampire futuristic tale. And the artwork is exceptional. Beautiful, imaginative um, cityscapes, great figure work, great work with the uh, movement, with the action scenes and the pace and the flow. The writing is super solid. It's Elliot Rahal. He's crafting a noir, neo-noir detective story, futuristic, involving a conspiracy about vampires being killed and vampires kind of like the the aristocracy of human of, of society at this point in the future and so when vampires start getting killed they put two of their best detectives one human one vampire on the case and what they unravel starts unraveling this centuries old conspiracy and this and that and like i said ninjas vampires in a futuristic cyberpunk s type world it's like blade runner meets blade which I would call Blade Blade Runner. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Bleed them dry. If you like sci-fi, if you like action, if you like horror and vampire fiction, this is all the best of those worlds kind of all jumbled together. And it's by Elliot Rahal. Ruan's pencils are amazing. Muerto's coloring. Holy cow. The coloring is amazing. The contrast, the choice of palette. It's very dynamic. It's got a great flow to it. And issue two really helps... Um, enhance the world, the mystery, and it leads us you in, uh, into some really exciting issues to come, and I cannot wait. And at number one, Pulp, the original hardcover graphic novel from Image Comics, written by Ed Brubaker with artwork by Sean Phillips, coloring by Jacob Phillips. I know I already ranted and raved about this book in the weekly comic book review, but bear with me. Let me do it again. What an amazing story. When Brubaker and Phillips are working together on books like Criminal, Fatal, The Fade Out, Killer Be Killed, and many, many more, it's just 
some of the best comic books you're ever going to read. This is no exception. Pulp is an original graphic novel. Nothing came before. Nothing's coming after. This is one complete story. It is in hardcover, but it's still at a decent price. I'll throw a link down below in case you can't find it at your shops where you can pick it up at a link through us and even help support the channel out just a smidgen. But Ed Brubaker knows how to do a hard-boiled, um, gritty, detective noir type style of writing without making it seem cliche, without making it seem um, like a parody. He still makes it feel real um, and, and absolutely filled with just captivation and compelling characters um, and interesting incidents, right? Sean Phillips' artwork, I mean, you already know. It's absolutely amazing. You add in his son, Jacob, doing the coloring. This is some of the best coloring work I've ever seen from Jacob. It's got a great, raw, gritty style. This book is half pulp comic, half Western comic in a way. The basic premise of the story is that there's this dude who in the late 1800s was a cowboy bandit. He was an outlaw, right? Now we cut to 1939. He's an old man. He's got financial problems. He's a writer who's writing pulp stories based on his prior life as an outlaw bandit, right? That's really interesting, but he's got too many problems. It's tough times for everybody, and now he's contemplating a return to that life of crime. Really, really great crime fiction. Brubaker and Sean Phillips are the best in the industry as far as crime fiction goes, like 100%. This book is amazing. The coloring has texture. It has nuance to it. Oh my goodness, this book, I couldn't get enough of it. It was a very quick read, um, but I instantaneously want to go back and revisit it. Such an amazing book. And I've heard rumors out there that some of these have signed book plates uh, stuffed in them. Mine did not. So that kind of sucks. Whatever. If you're a Brubake, Brubaker Phillips fan, no reason why you should miss this one. This is just as good as all their work that came before, if not slightly better. So that's my top 10. That's what I love. That's what I loved out of I read, out of what I read. What are you reading? What are you loving? What's your top picks and recommendations of the week? Let us know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Please do like, share, subscribe, click the notification bell. Join us over at popculturephilosophers.com for podcasts, blogs, advanced reviews, and a lot more. I've been Rockin' Robbie Billups. Thanks for rocking with us. Keep on reading.